So, uh, we're going deep on water this week. See what I did there? Water. We're going deep water. <laughs> so hold on to your mugs. What makes perfect coffee brewing water? Can I create perfect coffee brewing water on my own? And does it make a difference? That's what this week's Mug Life is here to answer. Hey coffee nerds, I'm Eric. This is the Mug Life. I didn't choose the Mug Life. The Mug Life, the Mug Life, the Mug Life chose me. Water is absolutely essential for brewing excellent coffee. Yeah, you can brew with water out of the tap, and I'm sure you can brew coffee with a lot of other liquids. Haven't tried that yet, your mileage may vary. I'm here to tell you that brewing coffee with good water will absolutely change your life. There's a lot of components to water, much more than hydrogen and oxygen, at least for the water we drink, but there are two measurements that we're gonna concern ourselves with today, namely hardness and alkalinity. First, let's talk about hardness in water. Hardness is a measurement of the mineral content in water. Coming out of the tap, calcium is the most common mineral, con mineral in water. If you see white buildup on your faucet or maybe on your shower head, that's mostly calcium. Uh, this isn't good in coffee, uh, particularly for coffee brewing equipment. We get scale buildup that's mostly calcium in espresso machines. It's on the inside of the boiler or other coffee machines. It can cause a lot of problems and really clog things up. But we do need some amount of mineral content to help the water extract all of the soluble goodness in our coffee beans. Without at least some mineral content, the water will leave a lot of the coffee goodness in the beans and not in our cup. In really good water, we have a very limited amount of calcium and instead uh, we can use in some cases magnesium that can be present in water and it doesn't affect the flavor and it doesn't build up scale on our equipment. Where do I find magnesium at home? Quite easy. Epsom salt. Available at your grocery store, very cheap. If you're going to pick some up, definitely make sure you don't get the scented stuff. So uh, magnesium will cover the hardness. The other side of our question is alkalinity. First, understand there are acids in coffee. Chlorogenic acid, malic acid, citric acid, they all work together to bring some of the flavors that we know and love. If there are a lot of acids, it can give a coffee a very bright flavor or possibly even a sour flavor or an off flavor if there's too much. We measure acidity on a scale called the pH scale. The scale goes from zero to 14. Seven is neutral. Measurements below seven are acidic and measurements above seven being, well, wait for it, alkaline. That's that word. When something is more alkaline, it's called a base. It's the opposite of an acid. High school chemistry is all coming flooding back right here, isn't it? I have Mr. Adkins to thank for that. So the opposite of something acidic is something alkaline. If we brew coffee, which has acids in it, with water that is alkaline, we'll kind of cancel out, or buffer is the term that we use, we'll buffer the acidity in the coffee. How the heck do we do that? Something you probably have the ha around the house, real easy to find. Sodium bicarbonate. Baking soda is an alkaline substance that we can add to water to help neutralize acids. You're begging right now, how does this help me serve better coffee? I am so glad you asked. We're gonna do a little experiment we're gonna mix up several different water recipes and taste coffee brewed with each of them and see how things change. 
There are lots of water recipes for coffee bouncing around the internet. I've taken some pointers from a couple of them and put together a real simple way you can play with your water formula and get the coffee that you want. We are going to need some gear, okay? First, you're going to need at least three liters of distilled water. Yes, we're talking metric, get over it, adjust. Second, you're going to need your sodium bicarbonate, baking soda, all right? You can get as much as you want, not baking powder, that is different. You're going to need some Epsom salt, like I said before, make sure that you do not get the flavored or scented, scented stuff, unless you like lavender flavored coffees, you can do that too. You are going to need a scale, preferably one that can read in tenths of a gram. This is kind of important. You are going to need three containers that each hold at least 500 milliliters of water each. You're going to need a couple of eyedroppers or a syringe or something where you can measure small amounts of water like I have here. It's like chemistry class all over again. So here's what we're going to do. First, I am going to measure out 500 milliliters of distilled water. You can be all sciencey like me uh, and use a uh, beaker. You can look cool like this and a scale. You're going to measure out 500 grams on your scale. That's equal to 500 milliliters of distilled water. And then I am going to add 8.6 grams of baking soda to this. And I'm going to dissolve it. You're going to stir it until it is completely dissolved. And you actually may, before you brew with this, you might want to let this sit maybe a couple hours or maybe even overnight. I'm going to put that 500 milliliters in my container for brewing. And I am going to label that. This is my bicarb. Can you see that? Bicarb. Can you see that? Bicarb. All right, this is my buffer concentrate. Then I am going to take the same thing again with another 500 milliliters of water, distilled water. And I am going to add 25 grams of my Epsom salt, my magnesium, for you non sciencey folk, to that. Again, stir. Again, make sure that this is not scented Epsom salt. The stuff in the bath section is scented. The stuff in the medical section of the grocery store, not scented. That's what you want. Pour that 500 milliliters of magnesium water into my bottle for storage. And I am going to label that magnesium. So these two bottles that I have right here, my bicarb and my magnesium, these are my concentrates. I like to keep them separate. Some people put them together. If I keep them separate, I can play with different water recipes much easier than I can here. 
Next step, I'm going to measure out another 500 milliliters of distilled water. Hey, look at that. It's almost like I had it pre-measured. To that distilled water, I am going to take my syringe because that's the easiest way for me to do it. And I am going to add one milliliter from each of these two bottles of concentrate using an eyedropper or if you have a pipette or you can just pour real carefully. One milliliter. I feel so sciencey here. It's so cool. One milliliter. So there is one milliliter of my magnesium concentrate, my hardness, and then I am going to take a different syringe and I'm going to add one milliliter of my bicarb, my buffer solution. my water and this I'm going to add into my here and this is my perfect coffee brewing water. I've taken distilled water and I've remineralized it with a little bit of bicarb, a buffer, and a little bit of magnesium for mineral content that will actually do the extraction for me. And that my friends how you make perfect coffee brewing water at home. That's it. 500 milliliters of perfect coffee brewing water ready to go. Let's take this one step further and change things up for science. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make two more water samples and take each of the components that we already talked about to an extreme and see how that affects the flavor of the brewed coffee. So same steps. I'm going to measure out two samples of distilled water, 500 milliliters each. There's one sample. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to start off by adding one milliliter of my bicarb, my buffer solution. on some like medical show. I'm sure I saw this happening on a medical show when I was a young kid. And I'm going to add one milliliter of my magnesium solution, my hardness solution. If you don't have a syringe or a pipette or something like that that you can do this with, it is also close enough to measure out one gram of that water that you can add in. So what I have right here is another, um, another mixture of my perfect coffee brewing water. So I will do the same thing a second time. But what I am going to do in addition on this one is I am going to add nine milliliters, uh, nine milliliters of my magnesium solution in here. So this sample that we have right here is going to be our hard water. I have a container here, it's labeled hard because this one has nine or 10 times the magnesium content that my perfect brewing sample has. I guess that would be 10 times, nine times. So I put in all right, 
So I've got a brew, good brewing sample. I have a very hard sample. And I am going to make one more sample that's going to be exactly the same setup, only very alkaline. So what I'm going to do is I have my distilled water and I am going to add on this one, one milliliter of my magnesium solution. and nine milliliters of my bicarb solution, my buffer solution. Ten milliliters of my buffer solution. Mix that in there, and I am going to put that in a container labeled alkaline. This is my buffer solution, all ready to go. All of these bottles kicking around. So, where are we? We have three samples of water. One of them is our perfect coffee brewing water. Another one is our alkaline buffer solution, which should, we're assuming, make the coffee taste much less acidic. Another one is our hardness solution. It's got extra magnesium in there, so we should extract more, and we'll see what happens with that. Let's brew some coffee. We're gonna cup some coffee and see what the flavor notes are. All right, so we have brewed our coffee. We've made our water, we've brewed our coffee. We are ready to start cupping it. I have my my buffered solution over here with the bicarb in it. I've got my regular, perfect, supposedly brewing uh, coffee here, brewing water here, and I have our really hard water over here, and I'm gonna taste each one of them. I already brewed them, I already broke the crust, um, so, and it's cooled down a little bit, so we're ready to go. It's kinda, There is a marked difference between these two. Yeah. Yeah, interest, fascinating stuff. Um, the brewing, uh, by the way, this is a natural process Ethiopian coffee from Yergeshev, lighter roast coffee. Generally a lot of good fruity notes to it, so that's why I picked this one for this particular exercise. Uh, the brewing, uh, batch really nice just like I would expect it um, some nice floral fruity notes bright acidity uh, kind of a light body that but still there really nice the hard water that acidity goes away super hard water it's uh, it kind of falls flat. The aftertaste, there's like no excitement in there. The buffered. Yeah, the buffered, again, both of these, the hard and the buffered kind of fall flat. Not really anything exciting happening there. All of the acidity is gone, probably because there was so much of the individual solutions that are in there, but on the uh, bicarb one, I can kind of taste a little bit of the acidity wanting to come out and a little bit of the fruitiness in there, um, but it's really not there. The hardness, uh, the hard water, 
it's like all body, no acidity, uh, which is in there, which is no excitement. Ah, just not thrilled with it. But that brewing, uh, it's, a, it's amazing the difference between the three of these. Uh, totally different waters, totally exactly the same brew. The brewing one is super nice, all the fruity notes that I would expect. Uh, the bicarb one with the buffer solution in it just definitely falls flat. Um, the uh, hard water one also definitely falls flat. I have brewed with coffee out of my tap at home on occasion, believe it or not. Uh, and I have to admit, this is kind of what it tastes like because you get so much hardness in there. It's a different hardness than the calcium hardness that you get from, uh, from tap water. But uh, that's an interesting experiment to try. I definitely would want to uh, be drinking the one with the brewing coffee on there. So where does this all leave us? And what have we learned aside from Eric really likes to mess with water? <laughs> well. If you're someone who enjoys a lot of bright, sometimes fruity flavors in Ethiopian naturals or maybe Kenyan coffees, you love light roast coffees, dry white wines, sour beers, stuff like that, but your coffee at home is always kind of flat and uninteresting like some of these, you might want to try this recipe and maybe leave out a little bit of the bicarb. Uh, maybe only do a half a milliliter of bicarb instead of a full milliliter and see how that affects your brewing your taste maybe you're somebody who likes coffees that are typically more smooth and mellow full body but not into the bright fruity stuff you're drinking deep red wines and darker ales and stouts you might like a water that's a little bit heavier on the buffer side of things and will tend to mellow out those bright fruity coffees and give you something less acidic uh, maybe you own or work in a cafe and this month you're highlighting a super fruity Ethiopian natural on your pour over bar. So you might want to mix up a water solution that's a little light on the buffer side of things. Highlight those fruity acidic notes in the coffee. That would absolutely be amazing. Or maybe I have just completely scared you off and you're going to continue to use tap water because this is just way too much work. Let me know in the comments down below if you've tried this, what you like, what your favorite water recipe is, and maybe what you don't like. I'd love to hear about it. In the meantime, keep serving coffee people love.